Today what we're going over is determining if a dry flare will leak under high pressure. So some technicians put these flares together completely dry and some put a little bit of nylog or refrigerant oil on the flare face and the flare adapter before tightening them down. So we're going to run an experiment with one set of flares here and another set of flares here. One will be wet with a little bit of nylog on the flare face and the other ones will be dry. We're going to do a pressure test to see if we have any leaks. We're doing this experiment to tell if a dry flare joint will leak compared to a wet flare joint because one of the biggest problems with mini split installations is leaking refrigerant from the flare joints and that's due to the initial installation or improper leak checking. And so we're gonna build this rig in order to do this test. So we're starting our project by cutting our copper tube into small sections with our tubing cutter. Then we're deburring the copper tube ends. And so we wanna make sure that there's no shards at the end and then we're gonna go ahead and place our copper tube into the head of our eccentric flaring tool. We're gonna go ahead and drill the cone in into the copper and then we're gonna back it up. And after we back it up, we'll release it out of the head of this tool. And now we're gonna go ahead and examine this copper tube. So you can see here that the copper tube face looks pretty good. So I cut these copper tubes at two inches so that I could go ahead and put two flare nuts on and flare the other side of the tube with this eccentric flaring tool. And here you see all of our copper tubes and they have two nuts a piece. Their flares look good. So this is our quarter inch and the previous one was three eighths. And now we're gonna go ahead and tighten all these on by hand. So we're first gonna put them all together. You wanna make sure to not spin the flare adapter but just spin the flare nut as you're tightening because you don't wanna scar the flare face on the copper tube. And here you see our torque wrench set at 11 foot pounds and that's for our quarter inch OD copper tubing flare adapters. And so we're gonna go ahead and tighten that down and you see we're, we're tightening that down until the tool clicks. And so we're gonna do that for every one of these joints. And now we set our torque wrench to 26 foot pounds of torque for our 3 8 OD copper tubing. You wanna read the manufacturer's specifications for the, the mini split or the air conditioner that you're installing for the proper foot pound torque values. So now our dry flares are complete and we're gonna start in on our wet flares. So now we're gonna add a little bit of nylog onto our rubber glove. You wanna make sure that you're wearing your nitrile gloves and we're gonna put just a little bit onto the flare adapter and we're gonna put a little bit onto the flare face as well. Make sure that you do not put any nylog or refrigerant oil onto those threads, otherwise that will negatively affect the, the torque value. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna keep putting it on so you can put it on both the flare adapter and the flare face, not on the flare threads and we're just gonna keep assembling this all together. So what I'm working on right now is 3 8 copper tubing. And so I have these quarter inch adapters and then I have a quarter to 3 8 and then we have 3 8 to 3 8 And then we're gonna put this little cap on the end. So now we have our torque wrench set at 11 foot pounds so we can go ahead and tighten our quarter inch connections. And here we have our nitrogen tank and nitrogen regulator. So we're opening the tank up and then we're turning in our, our handle to increase the pressure on the outlet hose. And so I'm not gonna go up all the way in this pressure test. I'm just gonna go up to about say 440 or so, or 430. And so I'm adding that nitrogen into the manifold and letting that pressure equalize across both sides. So I'll just go ahead and close these handles now and we're gonna see what happens to our pressure. And now you see our left hand side, which is our dry flares, that's, that's actually leaking. And so that's our nylog side and that's our dry side. So we're gonna go ahead and leak check for our leaks on our dry side. We're using our anti-corrosive bubble leak detector. The big blue product from Refrigeration Technologies really works well for finding the nitrogen leaks. And you see that we have some bubbles forming right here on this 3 8 flare adapter. And this one bubble is continuing to grow and grow. And that's why you wanna have a good bubble leak detector that's not gonna have the bubbles pop immediately or, and it's not gonna eat away at the copper tube. So what we're gonna to need to do is inspect this. So let's go ahead and release this pressure out of this line here. And we're gonna to have to disassemble this in order to inspect both the flare face and the flare adapter. I'm using the torque wrench here, but I can just use just a regular adjustable wrench. It just happens to be what I have right here. So here's our flare adapter coming off of our flare nut. 
and we're first going to look at our flare face. You do see it looks a little scratched up here along the perimeter and here you see our flare adapter and this flare adapter has a couple nicks in it and so we're going to need to replace both the the flare adapter and also the flare face so we're going to have to replace this with a new section of copper tubing so here now we're retightening our new section on i remade those and we're just tightening it down to the proper torque specs now we're ready to pressure test and we have our nitrogen bottle already opened we have our regulator turned in we're at about 650 psi on our service line and we're going to attach in and you want to notice that our digital manifold set is reading zero psi on both sides both of these are open and this is open this is closed so we're going to let our nitrogen in and then we can shut this and we can close here we can disconnect and we can close this first and then we'll close this side and then now we just need to monitor it so after nine days our pressure test has held about 640 psi on both our nylog side and our dry flare side and so we have recorded our pressures and temperatures so for each day our pressure is going to change on both sides depending on our temperature and so at right around 640 or so it changes about one psi to maybe two psi for every degree of change if it was say 300 psi it might be half a half a psi to one psi of change for every one degree uh, so you got to remember that nitrogen does change pressure due to temperature it's not as much as refrigerant but it certainly does and so we know that we are not leaking any refrigerant so the well in this case it's nitrogen but if we were on a mini split system uh, we would not be leaking refrigerant and that's the big thing is on a mini split system that's operating at high uh, pressures due to it operating in heat pump mode or r410a refrigerant we want to make sure that it's not leaking out of any of these flares and you have multiple flares on a system you can maybe get away with brazing at the indoor unit, but at the outdoor unit, you have to have your flare fittings to tie into your, your mini split unit. And so we have multiple flares. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight flares on this system. And we have our caps on the end. And we've used our big blue bubble leak detector uh, to test for leaks. And the whole point of this is, what I really want you to know is the best way to, to do a pressure test on a mini split system is with a digital gauge set, because you'll be able to see the increments change uh, very very quickly when you're when you're doing a pressure test you have to keep in mind your temperature as well and you take your nitrogen bottle out of your your hot truck and so you got to let that uh, nitrogen stabilize within that system when you're doing your pressure test before vacuuming but regardless whether you use a compound manifold gauge set such as this or a digital set such as this you want to add your bubble leak detector the non-corrosive bubble leak detector to all of your flare joints and so a compound set even if you let it sit for 10 minutes or an hour or something like that the incremental changes are just not going to be seen as well as on a digital set and the the other thing is you you are going to have a little bit of a change just due to the temperature of the nitrogen and the best way to to use that time during your pressure test is to add your bubble leak detector to all of your flare joints at the indoor wall units and at the uh, outdoor connections at your service valves and so it's not like a breeze joint where it's either leaking or it's not on a flare joint it may be leaking just a tiny 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 amount and over time that's going to leak enough refrigerant out of that system to where it's not going to work properly and that's one of the the biggest issues with mini split systems that are installed is is leaking refrigerant and it's due to these flare joints not being say tightened down to the proper torque specifications in this video i did 11 foot pounds for a quarter inch and 26 foot pounds for three eighths but you really want to read the manufacturer's installation instructions for um, the the size tubing and the foot pound uh, torque values because they are different uh, but make sure you're you're torquing them down and you're leak checking with your bubble leak detector and the whole point of this video really really is more so on uh, if a dry flare is able to hold high pressure and this test pressure is way higher than you would ever test a uh, mini split system too and you want to make sure that you if the system's new you're only pressure testing it up to the design uh, pressure or a little bit lower than that really uh, if it's an older mini split system don't even pressure test it that high because you could be creating a leak just due to the corrosion at the coils 
But anyway, we, we do see that dry flares will hold in high pressure. And so, so that's good. And, and the nylog on these uh, flare faces, what it'll do is it'll take up any, any kind of gap or a little tiny, not a gap, but like a, maybe a scarring on the flare adapter, you know, but it'll definitely hold the pressure. Um, you know, how well that'll work over time. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comment section below and let me know uh, what, your, what your experience has been. Um, but it seems to hold pressure very well. And so whether you go with a dry or a wet flare, just make sure that you don't put any uh, refrigerant oil or nylog on the flare threads because it'll act as a lubricant and it'll mess your, your torque value up and you'll be over tightening them and you may even just glide right off of your threads. You may like de-thread it. So just make sure you don't do that. So if you do add it at all, it'll be, just be on the flare face, but we do see that our dry flares do work. So, um, so that's the point of the video. And uh, if you wanna check out more free resources, check out our website over at acsurfacetech.com where we have articles, quick tips, calculators, the podcast, we've got quizzes there. We also have our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book, our thousand question workbook, quick reference cards. And we also have some posters for, for teachers and PowerPoints for teachers. So make sure you check all that out over at acsurfacetech.com. We also have our physical resources over at Amazon. And our ebook is available over on our website, Google Play, and Apple Bookstore. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.